Hello learners, welcome to this course on Fundamentals and Programming of 8085 Microprocessor. In this tutorial, I will be discussing about Serial Communication Interface IC number 8251. How to interface this 8251 with 8085 Microprocessor. So, Serial Communication Interface is very important for transferring the data from your CPU to the peripheral devices. So the transfer of data from your CPU to the peripheral devices can happen in terms of a parallel fashion or through serial data transfer. So serial data transfer in the sense we try to send the information bit by bit a data transfer can happen. So serial data transmission reduces the number of connecting lines between your microprocessor and the peripherals and also for long distance communication, serial communication is feasible and practical also. So here we are going to discuss an IC which is serial communication interface A251 which is a universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter. In short form it is called as a USAT. Universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter. So it is going to act like a mediator between the microprocessor and the peripheral devices. So the microprocessor is going to generate a parallel data. It will send the parallel data through D0 to D79. So now this data, parallel data, will be converted into serial data, which is bit by bit fashion, and it will get transmitted to the peripheral device. If the peripheral device sends some data to the microprocessor in a serial fashion, then that serial data is again converted into parallel data and it is given to the CPU. So this IC it acts as a mediator between the microprocessor and peripheral devices. So it converts serial data to parallel and vice versa. So it takes data serially from peripheral device and converts into parallel data and provide it to the CPU. Similarly, parallel data from microprocessor is converted into serial form and the serial form is transmitted to the peripheral device. So it is a 28 pin dual inline package. Here I show the pin details. So the D0 to D7 of your 8251 will be connected to the D0 to D7 of your microprocessor. Then we have reset line. So the reset out of your microprocessor can be used as a reset input signal for your A25. There is a clock line, command or data line. So we have command register as well as data register. For selecting command register or data register, it can be selected with the help of a A0 line of your microprocessor, address line A0 from your microprocessor. So A0 is equal to one command will be selected, A0 equal to 0, data will be selected. So command register or data register will be selected. Then we have control lines like RD bar, whether we are going to read a data or write a data into this IC. There is a chip select line, CS bar is a chip select line. Then there is a modem control signal. So the modem control signals are to transfer the data using some telephone lines or through coaxial cables, we need to convert the digital data into analog form. Then this data needs to be transmitted. So that is done with the help of this modem control signal. So DSR is data set ready, DTR is data terminal ready, CTS is clear to send, RTS is request to send the data. Then there is a transmitter line. TXT is a transmitter line, RXT is a receiver line. So the transmission of serial data happens through this TXT line, receiving of the serial data happens through this RXT line. Whether transmitter is ready to transmit the data, that is indicated by this transmit ready and whether the transmitter buffer is empty or not. If the data has been transmitted to the receiving device, then the buffer will be empty. So it will be indicated by this transmitter empty signal. And TXC represents transmitter clock at what rate the data should be transmitted. 
So here we talk about a baud rate, number of bits transmitted per second. So at what speed the data transfer is going to happen, that is decided by this transmitter clock. Then we have VSS, VCC and ground line, power supply and ground line. Then receiver ready. As soon as the data is received through this RXD line, it goes into the buffer register. Once the buffer register has a valid data, then the RX ready will be indicated so that the CPU can read that data. The same way the RXC is a receiver clock is used for at what rate the data should be received, at what speed the data should be received. That is indicated by this RXC signal. Then there is also a synchronous detect or break detect which is used for synchronizing the data with the internal clock. So when we receive the data, so this data should be synchronized with the internal clock of the 8251 IC. So these are the different pins available in your 8251 IC. So now let us look at the architecture of your 8251 IC. It consists of 7 blocks. So it has a transmit buffer. So this transmit buffer is going to convert your parallel data to serial data and going to transmit through this TXB line. So the parallel data comes from your microprocessor, it comes from the data bus buffer. So from D0 to D7, the data will be received on this data bus buffer and from this data bus buffer, it goes into the transmit buffer, there it gets converted from parallel to serial and it gets transmitted using this TXD line. So the transmission is controlled by the transmit control block. So whether the transmitter is ready to send the information that is indicated by the transmit ready signal, whether the transmitter buffer register has a valid data or it is empty, empty in the sense once the data has been transmitted out it becomes empty. So those status is indicated by the transmitter empty signal and there is a transmitter clock which determines the speed of your transmission. Then there is also a receive buffer which converts your serial data coming through this RXD line, convert it into parallel data and this parallel data goes into the data bus buffer. From data bus buffer it will be read by your CPU through D0 to D7 line. So the receiving data, serial data gets converted to parallel, it goes into the data bus buffer through data bus buffer it gets read by your CPU and the receiving part is also controlled by the receive control signal. So again whether the receiver is ready to accept the data and the receiver clock at what rate it should receive the data. Same way synchronous detect or break detect. So while receiving the data, the data received through this line, RXD line should be synchronized with the clock signal, internal clock signal. So for that we make use of this synchronous detect or break detect signals. Then we have two more blocks, read write control logic. So read write control logic, whether we are going to write a data into the transmit buffer or read a data from receive buffer. So read and write signals, whether we are going to configure this, this 8251 IC. So configuration in the sense at what speed we have to send the data, whether we are going to read the data or write the data. So those information can be done with the help of this command or data registers. So this will be activated by your A0 line of your microprocessor. Then the clock signal for your transmission speed as well as for receiving speed and the reset signal can also be applied from your microprocessor to the A251 IC. Then there is also a modem control, as I said modem control is nothing but a modulator, demodulator which converts the analog signal to digital signal and vice versa. So whenever I want to send the digital information to any peripheral, we use coaxial cables or we use some telephone wires, twisted pair wires, we try to send the information. So we need to convert this digital data into analog data. So for that we make use of this modem control. So this has four lines, DSR, which is data set ready. So data is ready to be transmitted. Then data terminal is ready, which means the device is ready to transmit the information. Clear to send is an input signal. It controls the data transmit circuit. 
and request to send. It's an output signal. It is asking for data from other peripheral devices. So we have different operations on this read-write control logic. Like when the chip select is activated, zero will activate the chip select. And depending upon whether we are going to use the command register or data register. So active low means data register, active high means command register. So data register, for example, zero means if I do read, the data will go from 8 to 5 to the CPU. So we are reading the data. CPU is reading the data. Same way CPU can write the data onto 8 to 5 using this combination. If I have a command register is activated, in that case reading means the status word gets read by the CPU. Whereas writing means the control word is read, uh, written by the CPU. So there are three registers available. One is data register, command register and a status register. So how to interface this 8085 microprocessor with 8251 serial communication interface IC? So here I have shown the 8085 microprocessor. Here we have a 8251 IC. So the reset out of your microprocessor can be given as an input to the reset signal. Then D0 to D7 of your 8085 can be connected to D0 to D7 of 8251. Read signal can be interconnected, write signal can be interconnected and clock out from your 8085 is connected to the clock signal of your 8251. And A0 line from your 8085 is used for selecting a command register or data register. So 0 means data register will be selected, 1 means command register will be selected. Other lines, if I have configured it in IO map the IO mode, so it's a 8 bit address for each IO device. So remaining 7 lines are used for chip select lines. If it is a memory map IO, then we need to use a 16 bit address. So in the 16 bit address, A0 will be used for selecting command or data register. Remaining 15 bits or 15 address lines will be used for selecting the chip select line. Then there is a transmitter out which sends the serial output data. Then the transmit control signals like transmitter is empty, transmitter is ready is an output signal. Same way the transmitter clock at what rate the transmission should happen. And for receiving, same way we have receive ready, uh, receive uh, pin and a receive clock and there is for modem control signals. So, for example, if A0 is 0, means data register will be selected and if the read signal is activated, then we are going to read, CPU is going to read the data. Again, if A0 is 0, means data register is activated. If it is 0, means write signal is 0 in the sense, we are going to write the data into data register. Same way, we can read the status word and write the control word from your CPU. So this is how an 8085 microprocessor is interfaced with serial communication interface 8251 IC. So that by the data from your microprocessor which is parallel data can be converted into serial data and it can be transmitted out. Same way the serial data coming from a peripheral device can be converted into parallel data and it can be sent to the CPU for further processing. So in this tutorial, I have discussed about on how to interface a 8251 serial communication interface with a P85 microprocessor. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical learning. Thank you.